Hey guys, today we're going to be making a new cabinet for my 3D printer here. So I've recently acquired this Ender 3, bought it online, built it up, and uh, it's going good, but I'm trying to print ABS and it just won't print without an enclosure because it needs to be um, pretty high ambient temperature around 40, 50 degrees, which in an open frame printer like this just doesn't work. So I've had it sitting on my old chest of drawers here and uh, looks pretty tacky. I've been meaning to get rid of these anyway. So what I did just to test if the theory works is I made this print enclosure out of a, a box and it just had a little door and it sits over the printer and um, it worked really well. So the ABS prints no longer separated, print really good, uh, but obviously it looks like shit. So what we're going to do today is build a nice new enclosure. So I'll include all the part numbers and parts and everything in the description and overlay on the video. But basically, I've got this um, cabinet from IKEA, um, which is a uh, platzer, I guess you could say. I've got some shelves for it. I got a door, which is half glass, half wood. Looks quite nice. I've got some little legs, a door handle, latches, uh, a little clothes hook, which I'm going to put my reels on, hopefully. I got a smoke alarm quite important this is a battery operated one so no need for cabling some little clamps to run the cabling neatly down in the cabinet I've got these carbon filters also from IKEA there's two of them in here so I'm gonna drill a big hole on top put these in there so the room's not smelly and hopefully uh, yeah it makes it quite pleasant to be in there, around a nice new extension cord to run and what I'm gonna do is put the power supply um, underneath the printer so I'm gonna have like sort of like a hot area and then the other one will be for all my storage of all my parts. And I'll have the power supply under there, so it's not in the heat, not in the direct heat anyway. Um, I might move the display and everything under there as well, but I think the cabling is going to be a bit short. So for now, I'm just going to put this power supply in because it's just got this battery cable here. So I can easily just run that down, down the back of the shelf, and make up some 3D prints and brackets to mount this power supply. So, uh,. Anyway, without further ado, I will assemble it and show you the end result. Okay, so I've just taped off the area that I'm going to drill in. Just marked out where the filter is going to go. So I've taped uh, back and front. That way the malamine coating uh, doesn't just break away because when you jigsaw it, it will just splinter everywhere. So I'm going to cut on this side because this is the presenting side. So the cut side you cut on is generally the somewhat nicer side and the other side will tend to blow out quite a lot. So hopefully we don't have too much and you won't really notice it, but with the tape there it'll stop it somewhat, so now we'll cut it out. Okay, so I've cut the hole, and as you can see, it's pretty good, I didn't lose too much of the uh, the outside edge, some of it's cracked off, but it's not too bad. So this is the showy side, it's going to be inside the cabinet, because it's got these screw holes which I can probably utilise later on if I want to hang something, and uh, yeah, this will just pop in from the back, and I've also got the little smoke detector thing on there. So now it's all time to put it together. Okay, so the cabinet is together. Moderately anyway. Came out pretty nice, I reckon. Looks pretty good. Just uh, what I was sort of hoping it would look like. So I've got the shelf in there just loosely at the moment. But the shelf is in line with the door. It'll pretty much stay there. It might go a tiny bit lower. But we've got the printer in here. And it can has its full range of motion. So it goes all the way back to that clicker all the way forward to this clicker and it just clears only just so as you can see I've removed the power supply so obviously this is going to be in an enclosed enclosure and uh, I don't really want the power supply sucking in hot air the whole time so I'm going to put the power supply in the second enclosure down here and this is actually metal so what we're going to do is take the shelf out and it should be enough length if I just drill a hole in here run this cable just up like this and I'm just going to I don't know if I'll make a bracket or I'll just velcro it in there it's pretty stable I'm not going to you know, not going to be any movement or something in this cabinet so it's pretty safe being where it is drill a hole and then just run this power cable down which has got enough length on it to go down there then for the actual main power cable I'm going to take this shelf out and just drill a little hole in the corner here 
and then run the main power cable down. Drill another little hole in the back of the cabinet at the side and just pop the cable out the back here and then run the extension cord to my power because unfortunately I don't have power on the side. It's on the other side of the room but yeah that's that pretty much. So I've got the clothesline reel with my uh, filament reel on it. Not quite sure if I'm going to run this to be honest. I don't know if going from this plane to this plane is going to sometimes throw the filament off the reel and then get jammed because um, when it's in the standard filament holder it's on a nice arc where it wants to be this is a bit unnatural so I'm just going to have to do a few test prints and see because it does sort of look nicer and um, what I'll be able to do is put all my filaments up here so just have them sort of stored up here and then when I need to pull out and put a different one on I can just unload it, roll it back up into the spool slide the next one over so it will be a bit easier I guess, I don't know, it kind of just looks cool I guess, so got the smoke detector and all that in there and the filter, so she should be rocking, so just gotta drill some of these holes put it back together and I'll show you the end result so to cut the holes in these panels because um, I, I do have a jigsaw but probably not the greatest for metal, it's probably the cheapest one Bunnings had uh, I've just been drilling a series of holes, so I just drilled a hole in each corner one in the centre and then one either side and then it just cuts it out or, if it doesn't cut it all the way, you can just sort of push the drill on an angle and it will cut it whole. And then uh, we'll just clean it up with a file. And it's as easy as that. I'm just going to put some conduit over the cabling that goes through it as well so it can't get cut up. Alrighty, guys, so it's all complete. And it looks bloody nice, if I must say so myself. Pretty happy with how it turned out, actually. So let's go for a little tour. So I've got the glass front. That shelf just sits just below the glass, maybe a couple of mil. Um, so the printer's on display the whole time, which is nice. I've just gone back to the old reel. I don't think the clothes hook's going to work, so I might take that off. Everything's all clean now. So if we go to the back of the printer, you can see the little hole the harness goes through and I've got the conduit on there to protect the cabling. I did sort of uh, get some pliers and and round the, the steel over so it doesn't hurt the cable but as you can see there, I mean it's not great but it's all good. Then the cable runs down here. The power supply is actually just sitting here. This is metal as I said before so it should radiate some heat into the shelf but you got your fan there, you got your exhausts, I think it should be okay. And the power cable runs over, I've pinned it to the side here. Again, got some conduit where this one goes through. And then under here, I've pinned it all the way down. Done a bit of a loopy loop just in case it gets pulled. It's not gonna try to pull the cable out of the power supply, it's gotta, because it's gotta pull on an arc, it's kinda hard for that to do, for that to happen, so um, Shouldn't get snagged at any point. And then on the outside, I've done the same thing again, little arc. And yeah, so that way if you if you ever tug this cable, it can't really pull out of the power supply and potentially damage it because that port on the power supply is not exactly the greatest. So yeah, that's the uh, the complete shelf. Without further ado, let's get printing. So just a quick summary guys. I've done a couple of prints with it now and uh, very very happy with the result it's a lot quieter um, if I had the cabinet closed and the bedroom door closed for this room I can't hear the printer at all uh, I can barely hear it with the door open to be honest but before when it was open frame even with the door closed in the bedroom I could still hear the printer uh, the high pitch sort of whine of it which will be getting fixed soon anyway but uh, yeah it's very nice now and the print quality that's coming out of it, also very good. Also, the, probably the, my, my favourite part of this cabinet is actually the carbon filter. Even when I have the door closed in this room, having printed for three hours, come into the room, not any bit of smell. Before, when it was open frame, I was printing ABS and I closed the door of this room. As soon as I opened the door, it just smells like burning plastic. It was just shocking. So, yeah, it's heaps better. So, just a quick one. This is a little uh, bonnet clip bracket that I printed 
This was printed in the open frame with the Carvel box over it. You can see it warped quite bad. Quality overall was pretty horrible. This is my first test print of the exact same piece with uh, with the cabinet, and you can see the quality is a lot better all the way around. You can see I've modified the design slightly since then, but uh, yeah, the, the quality is quite a lot nicer on the on the cabinet version. This one had a little split, if you can see, a bit hard, but it had a little bit of layer separation up here. And this one is just solid. So I'm now printing the exact same thing again, but I'm printing it at 0.16mm resolution rather than 02 and a 02 starting layer rather than a 024 so it should be a little bit nicer again. Alright, thanks for watching the video guys. Catch you later.